So you said you want to play Valorant after coming from CSGO or from other games. It's been two years, but it's still a decent time to get in. In fact, I'd probably say it's one of the best. I do have the account in the beta, but as much as people say old things are better, the beta was not better. <laughs> First thing you want to do in game is change your sensitivity. I have the sensitivity set to 0.157, but I usually play on sensitivity of 0.314. I did this recently because I found out that making your DPI go up higher actually makes your mouse movement a lot smoother. However, people, pros, and everyone included usually play from a range of 0.2 to 0.4. Usually do increments of 400s, so 400, 800, 1200, 1600. With 800 being the most popular one used by most people. You want to have raw input buffer on, that just makes stuff feel smoother for me anyway, I don't know if it's placebo. For crosshair, this is actually kind of important. I have a dot, here are the settings for that. I have a regular crosshair, which is the cross, however, I prefer the dot, as I actually like. I find it a lot more easier to just aim at people's heads when it's a dot instead of a cross, because I usually, whenever I use a cross, the line that would usually be right here, I usually shoot too early and then I end up missing, which doesn't usually matter in games, but in Valorant, as you can tell, getting the first shot is usually very important. This guide is going to be based off the Pareto principle, or the A20 rule or whatever, where 20% of the stuff that you actually are going to learn is important for 80% of actually being good at something. Now for Valorant, it's your sensitivity, your crosshair, you know, stuff like enemy highlight color to be able to see them, is a lot more important than stuff like, well, all of this. Yeah, you can optimize this, but who cares? Stuff like that is what actually is going to help you kill people. Same thing with controls. I have my crouch set to thumb mouse button, so you can actually crouch when shooting, even though you're not supposed to do that. It just don't, don't, don't tell people I do that. The default map is usually something like this, where you can't see everything. On ascent, it's kind of fine, because you can see into mid. Something around, something like that. Even though you can't see into spawn, most maps Pretty much every map actually you'll be able to see everything now another thing i want to talk about which is very important is callouts you can hold caps lock on any map and or i think you can press m yeah you can just press m and it'll show you the callouts for any spot on the map now it doesn't have things such as this is logs this is cubby or whatever people want to call it these days it seems to be like eight different things some people call it close right but whatever this general area is switch, this is lane, this is default, this is boathouse, and this is CT. Now, the map only has B main, B site, B boathouse, min market. Now that's kind of not good, because if you're pushing here, and you say he's site, you can either be here, you could be switch, or you could be here. Whereas if you said he's lane, everyone knows he's over there. However, even just knowing these basic callouts, which it's that this is a uh, this is CT, this is T, even though it says attacker and defender, people don't use those names, so that, that's what people are talking about. It's important to know the basic callouts, even though they're not the you know standard ones, because if you say, for example, someone is market, yeah. someone will peek out here, peek market kind of area, peek that off angle, peek there, peek CT. Peek there, peek here, then peek switch. As they're going out, they'll look towards market, and they'll see the guy logs. Even though you don't know what logs is called, you still helped out your teammate by just having a general idea where he is. For God's sake, don't say behind, because behind isn't actually that useful. Behind is... If you're on... Here? Like, let's say you're on switch. Someone says behind. Behind is either lane, boathouse, this green box, default, uh, cubby or whatever people call this. I, I, people call this like 20,000 different things. Behind you can be all those different areas. It's not that useful. It's kind of useful, but don't be pissed when someone dies from behind and then you're like, well, I told you where he was. Because you'd be surprised that happens a lot. People are going to disagree, but learning lineups isn't honestly super important to learning how to play the game. Nothing else, having a molly that hits default is very nice and it will win you games however you know what else is more important not sitting out here and then having your f face to the sky for the entire game while they just run up tap it and then while this is flying through the sky to land on top of generator apparently 
how this is flying through the sky and hits, you know, default, they actually have time to half it. And if you try to walk slowly up, that molly is cleared by around here. They are on the site. You'll be able to have a decent chance of dueling them. However, you probably won't know that. And also, that's with your knife out, which you'll have to have knowledge on where they are if they faked, which if you use your molly, they're probably off of it. And also, it's half. You can't do your lineup again. It's more important to know the timing of the defusal of where the lineup is important. If you killed, let's say you went, you know, you rushed the site, you killed everybody. You run back. You throw this when you think they're going to defuse it. It goes off. Yeah, it takes five seconds to use. But usually when it lands, they'll be tapping it. You use that. It delays them. You go up to here. They tap it again. And now you're in a much better spot. Because now you're over here. And now you actually get to kill them. Learning the lineup is not actually the important part. And it's not that hard to learn. And you probably should learn it. But do not fess up. Do not be extremely pissed because you know the lineup for here, 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 which I would say is the more important ones, but usually it's just here and here. You don't need to learn all the other ones right away. But don't be mad that you don't know all of these ones because people don't plant there. Just learn these two and you should be fine. On every site, there's usually two plant spots. Some sites have one because the map is trash, but usually there's two plant spots. Just learn those two if you're hellbent on learning lineups and you're a huge nerd. However, it's more important to learn the mix-up. If you've been playing lineups the entire game, it's more important to go here and throw this because this hits heaven. And sometimes people are blind and they don't see it. it. It does hurt you, by the way. That hits heaven. It's more important to learn than learning the molly lineup for this. They're not going to expect you being hell if you haven't played it. They're not, they don't know about this setup. Because people don't... If you can't be asked to learn the lineups and setups when you actually want to play a character, think about the other people. They don't care about Killjoy lineups. Insta-locking Jet, he doesn't care. They're not going to know either. So this will catch them off guard, and it's honestly more important to learn about mixing up your gameplay. Not doing the same setup every time. Is it important to know that this setup will see them if they enter here? And you can put an alarm bot here. You can put this here to split them up. I mean, this isn't this isn't like a patented setup, by the way. I'm just doing this on the fly. This will split them up, and then you can put one on main. To split them up again. Now if they push here, the alarm bar goes off, the turret's shooting them, they're getting swarm grenade, you might get a kill, you'll soften them off, you can cut them off up here. Eventually, you do this once, they clear this and that, and they check close left, and oh look, your alarm bot's here. That's gone. You gotta change your setup. It's more important to learn to learn when to mix up than it is to learn how to mix up your alarm bar here. It's not optimal. It's not gonna get shot out. You should be unpredictable more than just learning the textbook way of doing things. It's more important to understand that. But it's also important to have a base understanding for each site. You should learn one setup for each site if you only wanna play Killjoy. However, if you don't want to, it is still kind of important to know it, but Killjoy stuff has noise. But you can generally play on the fly and have a decent idea on how to counter things. If they have a Killjoy, they're go he, she's gonna play B. Because she goes on Reddit, so she's gonna know the microwave setup. Like, she does that. You're getting shot by the turret. This wins, this wins them one round, and then guess what? Next round, she comes out here. She's like, damn, that worked. Let's do this again. Why? They're just not, they're gonna either shoot out where it is, because they're gonna hear it and shoot it out. 
They're gonna shoot at the turret. They're just not gonna go lane, because you can, you know, you, the, these are the smokes anyway. So they're just not gonna go lane and go to site. You can do literally anything else. I was gonna show another set, but you can do literally anything else, and it'll be more effective for your team. You can do it one or two times. It's cool. You get the clip. Wow, good job. But to actually get better at the game, understand that people are not that stupid. Mixing up is more important than knowing all the textbook setups. You're gonna walk through here one time, you're gonna check lane, and then three people are gonna die because no one checked logs, and your team's gonna be mad. You just learned a valuable lesson. Instead of being tilted at your team, or you know, just focusing on your team flaming you, you have now learned that this spot exists. You should probably check it. And they're probably gonna say that he killed you from locks. Now you know that this is called locks. You learned all of that just by playing one round of the game. That's one round out of 13. And you already learned so much. This is why playing the game is a lot more important than synthetic. Is it cool to go on Kovacs and do Tiled Frenzy every day? Or play Aim Lab and do Grit Shot every day? Yeah. How many times are you gonna have someone stand here, 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 and you have to flick through them as fast as possible. That doesn't happen very often. It's a lot more important to learn how to counter strafe and shoot at a decent level. A general crosshair placement and where people are going to be. You can't learn that from Kovacs. You can't learn spray patterns from Kovacs and name labs. You have to actually play the game, which I know is the generic response that people usually give. Like, if you want to learn more about the game than play it, maybe you just don't even... Maybe you just shouldn't play this game. Because it's nice to have that passion to learn, but if you never actually want to sit down and just play the game, why, why are you even here? It, it, it's, it's a video game. It's fun. Stop worrying about it and play it with your friends, okay? You'll improve a lot faster than you will in these synthetic things. These synthetic benchmarks, such as Kovacs, Aim Labs... The firing range trying to get 30 score. Those are there for refinement. You see pros doing that because it helps them get a lot better at the situations that they don't have in game. It's a lot easier to improve at flicks playing grid shot than it is playing a game of Valorant because a game of Valorant you can only potentially see five people. Whereas grid shot you see like as many as you can kill. Now am I saying that aim trainers do not work. No, I'm not saying that. So, to review, what you should do, if you actually want to get good at the game, you should, one, play the game, two, adjust your sensitivity so it is right for you, three, have a decent crosshair, four, learn general callouts, or just press M, and n now you know you, you are good at the game, you're better than most ranked people. Go into a custom, you can, can go into a custom game like this to learn stuff such as lineups if you're playing a lineup character. And I will have guides on lineups on every map with Killjoy and uh, probably Viper in the future, but right now I'm just trying to learn Killjoy. So if you want to learn more about that nerdy stuff, you should probably, uh, you know, subscribe because uh, those will be coming in the future. Do these three first. If you want to do something such as Kovacs, which, would, which I would say is the fifth, is Kovacs aim training in general. I would actually push Kovacs and stuff like that to sixth because the fifth should be deathmatch. You cannot practice stuff in Kovacs that you can't practice in game. Game practice is always gonna be preferable to Kovacs practice. Some games like Valorant, the deathmatch isn't even that good and in the actual game you only see, you don't see that many people per round. So it makes sense to do Kovacs for certain scenarios that don't always come up and to have more stuff to shoot at. But Deathmatch is honestly fine enough for the vast majority of people. You want to get good at just Valorant, you can play Deathmatch and Casuals, and you could probably get to Immortal. Now, I've been playing Kovacs every day for six months. I'll have a video on that. Say that everyone should do it to be, you know, like, instantly better. Um, yeah and no. If you're generally new to the game, learning these fundamentals are way more important than learning about the polishing stuff. And, well, that's it. It's not that hard to get good at the game. So, if you like this, uh, make sure to like the video. You know, subscribe, because there's going to be more videos like this on Valorant. This actually is a very good game. I know it doesn't get said a lot, but I actually do like this game quite a bit. Even though I am fairly new to it myself.